Montesquieu's considerations on the causes of the greatness of the Romans and their decline offers a detailed analysis of the rise and fall of one of the greatest empires in history. Published in 1734, the book is not just a historical account, but also a profound examination of political theory, human nature, and the functioning of power. Montesquieu explores the social, military, and political factors that contributed to Rome's expansion and subsequent decline. Presenting timeless lessons about the workings of empires, Montesquieu's work is structured as a series of reflections on various phases of Roman history, from the early Republic to the decline of the Western Empire. He begins with the birth of Rome, describing how a small city-state managed to become a formidable empire before analyzing the gradual corruption and downfall that led to its fall. Each chapter of the book addresses key events, individuals, and political changes, which Montesquieu uses to illustrate broader lessons about governance, power, and the cyclical nature of history. Montesquieu identifies a combination of virtues, institutions, and circumstances as the primary causes of Roman greatness. He highlights the, the importance of the Roman character, marked by frugality, discipline, and a deep sense of civic duty. In the early days of the Republic, Romans were committed to the public good, which Montesquieu views as essential for the strength and unity of the state. This collective civic, mindiness, allowed the Romans to overcome many obstacles, both internal and external. Montesquieu emphasizes the importance of the Roman political system in their rise to greatness. The Roman Republic's unique balance of power between the Senate, consuls, and the people created a system where no single group could dominate, thus ensuring stability. The system encouraged public participation, instilled a sense of duty, and allowed Rome to adapt to challenges. The Roman military was also central to their success. Montesquieu credits their military discipline, strategic brilliance, and the ability to adapt as crucial factors. Unlike many other civilizations, Rome did not rest on its laurels. It continuously evolved its military strategies, adapting to new enemies and challenges. Their approach to war was not merely about conquest, but also about assimilation. Rome incorporated the conquered peoples into their empire, giving them certain rights and eventually citizenship. This inclusivity helped expand the empire without constant rebellion from the conquered. Montesquieu also points to external factors that played in Rome's favor. The geopolitical position of Rome allowed it to expand easily into surrounding territories. Furthermore, the internal weaknesses of its enemies often made Rome's conquests easier. When faced with formidable foes like Carthage, Rome's military might and civic unity enabled them to persevere through difficult wars, such as the Punic Wars, while Rome's early virtues enabled its greatness. Montesquieu argues that it was the gradual erosion of these very virtues that led to its decline. As Rome expanded, the moral and political fabric that had held the Republic together began to deteriorate. Montesquieu emphasizes that Rome's decline began when its virtues were corrupted. As Rome became wealthier and more powerful, the frugality and discipline of the early Republic gave way to luxury, greed, and personal ambition. The original spirit of civic duty 
was replaced by the pursuit of personal gain, which weakened the Republic's institutions. This moral decay, according to Montesquieu, was the root cause of Rome's political decline. This internal corruption manifested itself in the rise of power-hungry generals and politicians who sought to dominate the state. Figures like Julius Caesar exploited the weaknesses in the republican system, using their personal armies and wealth to accumulate power. The transition from a republic to an autocratic empire began with the undermining of the political checks and balances that had once maintained Roman stability. Montesquieu also notes that Rome's continuous military expansion was both a source of strength and a cause of its decline. While Rome benefited from territorial expansion, the vast size of the empire eventually became unmanageable. The Roman military, once a city's s duty, transformed into a professional army that was often loyal to its generals rather than the state. This led to internal strife as generals like Caesar and Pompey used their armies to pursue political ambitions, culminating in civil wars. The sheer size of the empire also made it difficult to defend. The Roman Empire became overextended, and as it expanded, it faced increasing difficulty in maintaining effective control over distant provinces. The need for constant military campaigns drained the state's resources, leading to financial crises and further weakening its ability to maintain order. As Rome expanded, its economy became increasingly dependent on slave labor, which created a stagnant, unequal society. The small independent Roman farmers, who had once formed the backbone of the Republic, were displaced by large estates worked by slaves. This economic inequality, coupled with the concentration of wealth in the hands of a few elite families, led to social instability. The political system, which was originally designed for a small city-state, could not effectively manage the vast empire and its complex problems. Montesquieu suggests that the concentration of power and wealth in the hands of a few elites led to widespread corruption. Political offices were bought and sold, and the loyalty of the military could be purchased by the highest bidder. This erosion of civic virtue and public trust, coupled with the increasing power of the military, ultimately led to the fall of the Roman Republic and the rise of the autocratic Roman Empire. Montesquieu also touches on the role of Christianity in Rome's decline, although he is cautious not to overstate its influence. He suggests that the spread of Christianity may have weakened the Roman state by undermining traditional Roman values and institutions. However, he does not present this as a primary cause of Rome's decline viewing it as one of many factors that contributed to the weakening of the empire. A key theme in considerations is Montesquieu's belief in the cyclical nature of history. He argues that all great empires rise and fall due to a combination of internal and external factors, the same virtues that contribute to a state's greatness often contain the seeds of its downfall. In the case of Rome, the very expansion that made it great eventually led to its overextension and decline. Montesquieu sees this pattern repeated throughout history, making his work not just a study of Rome, but a reflection on the nature of empires in general. Montesquieu's analysis of Rome offers timeless lessons for modern states. He emphasizes the importance of maintaining civic virtue 
political balance, and institutional integrity. When the pursuit of personal gain supersedes the public good, and when power becomes concentrated in the hands of a few, states are at risk of decline. His warnings about overexpansion and the corrupting influence of wealth and power remain relevant today, offering insights into the challenges faced by contemporary empires and nations.